Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out one of the strongest existing archetypes in Series 2 VGC at the moment, centered around Talonflame and Great Tusk as well as Assault Vest Tyranitar, and you have Booster Energy Flutter Mane as well as Iron Bundle and Gothitelle. This archetype was first popularized by a bunch of players at the Orlando Regional Championships, including Toler Webb, Justin Karras, and Yotam Cohen, all who had finished in the top 32 of Orlando Regionals, which was the biggest VGC Regionals in the history of Pokemon. And so, yeah, it's a really interesting kind of hyper-offense team that has so much damage across the board, and I also think, like, Great Tusk and Assault Vest Tyranitar are both just really strong Pokemon in the format at the moment. And so, wanted to feature it for all of you. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamp down in the description below and thank you so much as always for joining me if you do enjoy would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel it really helps out a ton anyway let's get started so as i mentioned the original team concept was created by a bunch of top players who did very well at the orlando regional championships i'll link their twitters down in the description below and this team was essentially recreated by a japanese player and they modified a couple of things on the team and you know created their own individual ev spreads for the original version of this team, there's no paste or rental code available, and so that's why I'm kind of using this recreated version, and there are some small differences between the two versions, which I'll highlight in just a bit. But yeah, thank you to uh, the Japanese player for recreating it, and I've linked their Twitter down in the description below, as well as a rental and paste for this team. And question of the day, this team has some pretty unique EV spreads. I'm curious what, you know, really unique EV spreads maybe you've created for your Paradox Pokemon that you think make them stand out down in the comments section below. So let's just jump into things. The first Pokemon to talk about is just Great Tusk. This Pokemon has incredible base stats, right? Like, you look at its HP, attack, and defense, really solid, and a pretty solid base speed as well. Obviously, Great Tusk is going to be slower than a fair amount of, like, the hyper-offensive Pokemon in the format, and so that's exactly why you have Talonflame. Talonflame supports it by enabling uh, Tailwind, which is really valuable. So, both of these are pretty straightforward. The main thing to call out here with the Great Tusk is that it has Focus Ash rather than Life Orb. I think both are really good item choices on Tusk. Life Orb just maximizes your damage output throughout every game, whereas for Focus Ash, it kind of allows you to at least, like, have a slightly better matchup into those Pokemon that can kind of just KO you normally, and it also means that you can bring Great Tusk without having to rely on Talonflame's Tailwind as much, but I think both are really viable items. I think that Life Orb gives you a little bit more damage output, obviously, and feels a little bit stronger in my experience, um, but Sash can make you feel a little bit safer in bringing Great Tusk. It just means that you might be missing out on knockouts that you otherwise uh, are getting with Life Orb. So, that's the main thing to talk about here, but incredible moveset and incredible damage output overall. I think with this moveset, Flying-type Pokemon generally are kind of scary, and that's exactly why you have Iron Bundle and Tyranitar on the team. Um, but Talonflame is supported with Great Tusk here, mainly for Tailwind. You've got Wildlands to have a better chance of hitting your Will-O-Wisp, and <laughs> that obviously can be pretty valuable. Uh, Taunt here is really nice into opposing like Trick Room teams, and just to shut down general setup as well. Uh, the main thing to call is you don't actually have a Fire-type attack, and so actually one of the things that I ran into is Steel-type Pokemon can be a little bit scary for this team, especially if they're not taking super effective damage from Great Tusk. For example, I ran into a Scizor once, and it actually caused me a fair amount of problems because my Talonflame went down, and then Scizor was like pretty bulky and can just do really good damage across the board. So keep that in mind because you're not running a Fire-type attack on Talonflame. I believe the original version of this team had Sharp Beak to kind of just maximize your damage output with Brave Bird, so that's one other thing you can consider. Flying Terra exists on this Talonflame. Ghost Terra is pretty common on Talonflame so that you can get around Fake Out, and so that's one thing you can consider as well, whereas Flying just allows you to maximize your damage damage output with Brave Bird a little bit more. So, Talonflame and Great Tusk in itself, really solid lead with this team. You've also got Assault Vest Tyranitar, and this is just a really good set in the format right now, because there are so many Pokemon that are special attackers. For example, Fluttermane, Iron Bundle, Armor Rouge. Tyranitar can, like, even though those Pokemon might have super effective attacks into Tyranitar with the Assault Vest and the Sand, like, you actually don't take that much damage, and you can deal so much damage in return, especially to something like Fluttermane that's so physically frail, right? And so, Flying Terra here is also really nice to just get rid of your weaknesses to ground as well as fighting, especially valuable in a format where Great Tusk exists, right? So you can actually be uh, kind of, you know, not immune to all of Great Tusk's attacks, but ignored some of its strongest attacks, right? So, yeah. I really like Tyranitar in the format right now. It didn't really get to thrive as much in Series 1 VGC in Scarlet and Violet because of the existence of things like Meowskarada and Golden Go. Those Pokemon are still around, but not nearly to the extent that they were in Series 1, so Tyranitar gets to thrive a little bit more. 
To round out the team, you've got Booster Energy Flutter Main. This is going to be one of the bulkiest Flutter Mains I think you'll ever see in the format, right? It's like near max HP, max defense. And the point is that like a lot of players realized, hey, since so many Flutter Mains are frail, I can just kind of use strong physical attacks to quickly knock it out, especially priority attacks like Palafin's Jet Punch. But with this amount of bulk, it's a lot harder to actually KO the Flutter Main. And the point is with the Booster Energy, you basically still do a lot of damage anyway. And since you have Talonflame on the team, as well as Icy Wind Speed Control from Iron Bundle, you don't need max speed on the Flutter Main as much. And so this is way tankier than your general flutter main and the idea is that you're probably going to be slower than opposing flutter mains but you're still so fast relative to pokemon in this format and with tailwind and speed control in general uh you can still outspeed a lot of things but you have more bulk to work with as well the original version of this team had moonblast instead of substitute but substitute is interesting because a lot of times players will try to protect to stall out the tailwind and so if you're able to get a substitute up on a turn when they are trying to stall your tailwind up the uh, flutter main is just super well positioned for success to round out the team, you've got Covert Cloak Iron Bundo. Covert Cloak is valuable for a couple of reasons. It allows you to avoid fake out uh, flinches, which is really nice, but it also prevents Garganackle from just chipping you away with Salt Cure, for example. Garganackle usage has definitely declined a little bit in this format, but it's still a Pokemon you want to be careful about. But being able to block fake out in particular is really nice with the Iron Bundle. And so this moveset is also really interesting. It's like a really bulky Iron Bundle with very little special attack investment. In fact, you're not even running Hydro Pump. Honestly, I kind of like that because every time I click Hydro Pump with Iron Bundle, I feel like my heart skips a beat. It's just so stressful. And so this is more of a utility-based Iron Bundle with Icy Wind, Freeze Dry, Encore, and Protect. Encore being one of the main moves to call out here that people generally don't expect. So you can lead Iron Bundle into opposing Flutter Main teams and just drop their speed via Icy Wind immediately and then use your Flutter Main to just try to KO them with the Shadow Ball. So that means Iron Bundle and Flutter Main is a pretty effective lead for this team as well. Iron Bundle, Great Tusk, Iron Bundle, Tyranitar, all really solid options. Finally, to round out the team, you've got Gothitelle, pretty standard Gothitelle here. The main thing to call out is that, first of all, this should be Trick, not Trick Room, but uh, it's also Normal Terra, which is really valuable in being immune to Ghost-type attacks, which is kind of cool. I guess it also gives you a slight damage increase in Fake Out, but that's not the main reason you would use it, right? Uh, the main thing is that with Gothitelle, you can trap opposing Pokemon in, and you have so much pure damage with these Pokemon. And one thing that this team does really well is scare away opposing Ghost types, because you've got your own Flutter Man, your Tyranitar, Talonflame can scare away Golden Go, Great Tusk can scare away Golden Go as well. And so Gothitelle, you know, doesn't love going up against Ghost type Pokemon, but often you will be able to just trap in both of your opponent's Pokemon, because they're going to be a little bit more scared to lead their Ghost types. And so you've got a pretty standard moveset here. No Heal Pulse or Protect, though. It's Fake Out, Psychic, Taunt, and Trick Room. Taunt is really valuable, and Trick Room can be valuable if you're going up against really fast-paced teams, because, like, the Flutter Main is actually slower than most Flutter Mains. Tyranitar really takes advantage of Trick Room as well, and so Gothitelle Tyranitar is the lead I've gone with, where I just Fake Out, and Rock Sider, for example, just attack in Trick Room, you know, Terra immediately, uh, and then use, like, Great Tusk and Flutter Main to clean up in the game. So, yeah. Overall, there are a lot of different modes with this team, and the general idea is to just overwhelm your opponent with offense as quickly as possible. But let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of weaknesses, I think the first thing I'll highlight is that Dondozo Tatsugiri is just not exactly the easiest matchup, especially in a closed team sheet best of one environment. And the main reason for that is because we don't really know what kind of Dondozo set it's going to be on the opposing side, how much speed they have, what Terra they have, whether it's Rest Sleep Talk or Leftovers Protect. And I even ran into a Dondozo that was Water Veil, and I tried to burn it with Talonflame. They had Water Veil, and I just like basically forfeited after turn two because it was like, no, I was beating it. And the main thing is once Dondozo gets, gets those attack and defense boosts, it's like, one, hard enough to deal enough damage to KO, and two, it's really hard to trade with it. And so, some answers against it, you can burn it with Talonflame, you can trap in one of the pieces with Gothitelle so they can't just combine immediately, you can use Iron Bundle for Freeze Dry, which is super effective, obviously, into Dondozo before a Terra. You can Encore them and try to lock them into a move, but generally, Wave Crash is just really strong into the entire team, and so that one combo in particular is something to watch out for. Well, one thing to note is that Iron Bundle and Talonflame are just faster than Dondozo, even if it's max speed. Fluttermane is actually not faster, always because you're not max speed here, but if you're going up against a slower Dondozo, it's not max speed invested. Obviously, Fluttermane can outspeed, but that's what I mean, right? In a best of one, I would want to assume that they are max speed Dondozo, and it makes it a little bit more awkward for Fluttermane to come out, so that's one thing to look out for. So, yeah, I think Dondozo Tatsu in itself can be kind of problematic and can be tricky to fight against. You certainly have answers against it, but it's just not, like, the, I think, easiest uh, combo to go up against. I think another thing to call out is just hard Trick Room. Like, yes, Flutter Main and Iron Bundle have more bulk than usual, but they still go down pretty quickly to Trick Room-oriented teams, right? Like, the four main offensive Pokemon on, um, other than Tyranitar, or I guess I should say the three in Iron Bundle, Tusk, and Flutter Main, like, all go down pretty quickly, um, even under Trick Room. 
or especially under Trick Room. And Tyranitar is like Gothitelle is normally the solution I have against Trick Room teams, right? Like I'll try to prevent Trick Room from taunting. And Tyranitar can deal decent damage with Rock Slide and Terra Blast, but it's still not the easiest matchup. And I've had games where it's like maybe I deny Trick Room in the early game, but then Trick Room ends up getting set up in the late game and I end up just getting swept. So that's one thing to watch out for. I think a really bulky Assault Vest Pokemon can be scary. I ran into a super bulky Assault Vest Garchomp, and that actually caused me so many issues, because, like, my Talonflame went down early. I think they had, like, Murkrow Garchomp, and essentially, like, we both Tailwinded. Talonflame just got Rock Slided, so I couldn't get a Will-O-Wisp off easily. Then I was like, okay, I'll just use Iron Bundle and Fluttermane to overwhelm me with offense, but even after, like, an initial amount of chip damage on a Garchomp with Dazzling Gleam, like, a Shadow Ball and the Freeze Dry still wasn't able to knock out Garchomp. So really bulky Assault Vest Pokemon can be problematic, because um, it's already difficult for Fluttermane and Iron Bundle to break through. Garchomp in particular gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, this team obviously has a good amount of spread moves as well, so Wide Guard helps out a lot, especially since this Fluttermane is not running Moonblast, and so that can be pretty scary for you to go through. Another thing to think about is when you're fighting against Great Tusk, like, Talonflame exists as an immunity to Earthquake and you can Terra Tyranitar as well, but otherwise it's not that easy to just click Earthquake without, like, you know, forcing a Protect from one of your own Pokemon, so you could potentially utilize that to your advantage as well. So, yeah. Those are just a couple of things that have given me trouble. I think, like, naturally, Steel-type Pokemon can be kind of scary. Uh, Great Tusk is going to be a really good solution into it, generally. But if they have a good Terra, for example, you know, like, they're Steel initially, but then they Terra into, like, Flying, for example. Things can get kind of awkward. And so I've, like, struggled uh, against, like, Scizor in particular. But that's one thing to watch out for as well. So, yeah. That's it for a breakdown. Let's get into these games. Iron Hands, Fluttermane, Arcanine, Roaring Moon, Grimmsnarl, and Amoongus. This reminds me, actually, a decent amount of uh, one of the first teams I featured in Series 2, using like dual screen Scrimstarl and just being really difficult to break through. So, they have one thing that can break through Gothitelle's Trap, which is their Flutter main. Talonflame plus Great Tusk here generally is pretty strong, I think. Obviously, we have to worry about like the Intimidate from Arcanine, Screens from Grimmsnarl, I think we could also consider just like Fluttermane uh, early because it can deal so much damage into Iron Hands, Roaring Moon, Grimmsnarl. Bundle is also interesting here because of Cobra Cloak. I think I probably want the top four Pokemon. You could make a decent argument for Tyranitar here though, especially with Flying Terra. It, it could be Tyranitar over maybe Bundle, for example. Especially because we don't have Hydro Pump on the um, Bundle here. It's Encore. Okay, I'm down for Talonflame plus Fluttermane. Great Tusk in the back, and then Tyranitar is the fourth. I think Tyranitar as a Terra option actually makes a lot of sense in this matchup. Flying Terra Blast for Amoongus. Also take less damage from fighting type attacks. But... If I Terra into Flying, then I become weak to Electric-type attacks, and so Iron Hands then becomes a problem. So, let's see. Where are they going to go with? Grimmsnarl and Iron Hands. Okay, this is obviously a strong start for Fluttermane. I think the main thing here is, like, does the Grimmsnarl have, um... Fake Out? Because if it doesn't, it's really free for me to just, like, Dazzling Gleam and Will-O-Wisp. I also don't hate substituting here on turn 1, honestly. Yeah, I'm down for substitute on Will-O-Wisp here. Like, Light Screen here, kind of annoying, but getting a free sub up is pretty sweet. And I think we just generally have so much more offense relative to our opponent. I can consider Tailwinding with Talonflame on the next turn, but... Right now, I honestly really don't need Tailwind since our like team generally outpaces our opponent. Where Tailwind helps is, I say, past this turn. But okay, no Fake Out, no Terra either. Nice, we don't miss Will-O-Wisp. Okay, that's huge. Yeah, I'm mainly curious if they just go for like a Wild Charge into Fluttermane or something else. But we'll set up Substitute. See if they go for Volt Switch, Wild Charge, and who they target into. Okay, Wild Charge and a Talonflame, beautiful. Does not KO me either. Perfect. Okay, I would say that is a pretty favorable outcome for us. Um, yeah, we're Ghost Terra instead of Fairy Terra. Not much point in Terraing. I'm happy to just click Dazzling Gleam right now. I think setting up Tailwind before we faint is decently valuable. 
Okay, yeah, let's just Tailwind Dazzling Gleam here. Power Flame's gonna Tailwind. Grimmsnarl did not go for a Reflect or a Priority move, so probably a Spirit Break onto the Flutter main slot. Good damage there with the Dazzling Gleam. It is gonna be Spirit Break here. I don't think a Wild Charge will KO us though, so it was honestly fine. Okay, and they just wild charge into Talonflame. Cool, that works. So they haven't set up Reflect. It means I had the opportunity to actually taunt the Grimmsnarl potentially, but it's fine. It's definitely Assault Vest Iron Hands. But I'm happy to just go out into Tusk now. I think the interesting thing about this position is trying to get a free substitute up with Fluttermane. Because essentially what I could do is actually keep my opponent's Grimmsnarl out on the field. So for example, I could substitute here. They're probably going to set up Reflect, which is fine. And I can just head Long Rush into the Iron Hands. Yeah, so they set up Reflect. But I think the lack of a tear on Iron Hands has made this a little easier for us. And the idea is by not knocking out Grimmsnow, I prevent my opponent from just getting two free switch-ins into strong Pokemon, right? Whereas now they only get one free switch-in and Grimmsnow is just not doing that much for my opponent. You already set up both screens. Spirit Break's a little bit scary. I could potentially consider Ground Terra on the Tusk, but I could also just switch out into Tyranitar right now. So we have options. But yeah, this is kind of one of the upsides of using like a bulky Flutter main, right? It's actually going to be Amoongus just coming out. Okay. So Moongus is going to be pretty bulky here, right? But I'm happy just clicking... Ooh, what do I want to do here? And what's their last one going to be? I think their Flutter may make sense, but then Tyranitar is really well positioned. I think Tyranitar is pretty good against most of their last Pokemon. Um, They're going to Spore something, right? And I really don't want to switch out into Tyranitar and let that get Spored, so I think i probably let them just put something to sleep here. I'm happy to just Dazzling Gleam and head Long Rush into Amoongus. Cool. Nice. That KOs the Grimmsnarl. So we're up 4-2, but they do obviously have both screens up and Amoongus will likely get the Spore off into Great Tusk. I could have considered protecting Great Tusk here, but I don't mind just eating up the sleep and then trying to, like, you know, um, bypass some sleep turns early on. Okay, good damage into Amoongus, and now that we've knocked out two Pokemon, Amoongus can't just switch in and out for Regenerator, which is really key. So, the position currently is a little bit awkward, because if it's like Dragon Dance, Roaring Moon with the good Terra, it can get a little awkward. And speaking of recovery, Amoongus actually does have leftovers, okay. But I think if, if it's Fluttermane as their last one, Assault Vest Tyranitar just wins this immediately. And it is Fluttermane. Okay, sweet. That's huge. So three turns of reflect, one turn of light screen. Um, their flutter main will be faster. Rage powder here makes sense. Curious if they have dazzling gleam. I honestly think I just wait for the free switch and into Tyranitar right now though. Dazzling gleam here would break a focus sash. They could always defensively Terra the Amoongus, I suppose. I don't mind protecting here. And stalling out a turn of their Reflect and Light Screen. Still no Terra from their end, but that makes sense. Okay, Flutter Main protects. Oh, is it Trick Room? No. Their Flutter Main is just slower than Great Tusk. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that is so slow. What? Okay, so it's like super slow, super bulky. Interesting. Uh, the leftovers on Amoongus is actually a little annoying here, I have to say. Tailwind Peter's out. Oh, it's because we had Tailwind up. Yeah. I was like, why are you so slow? Uh, three turns of Light Screen, five turns of Reflect. So they'll probably just Shadow Ball and Spore into the Flutter main slot. I mean, I'm down to just Shadow Ball into their Flutter main. Ooh, you know what's interesting? They're probably faster, right? So I can actually substitute here. And head Long Rush. Nice. Okay, so they go for Dazzling Gleam, which makes sense. Yep, substitute fades. 
I think if we wake up with Great Tusk here, I don't, it'll be hard for my opponent to come back. But yeah, the idea of just setting up Substitute again is so that um, they can't spore me that easily. Great Tusk does stay asleep. Essentially, like I'm trying to get the free switch in into Tyranitar right now. They spore. Great. They still have Interred, right? But they don't know about my flying Terra Blast. Uh, two turns of light screen, so I can protect now with my Flutter Main. They'll probably just Dazzling Gleam and Earthquake again. Or sorry, Dazzling Gleam and Spore again. <sighs> the thing is, I could have switched Tusk out this entire time, but I think it's really bad if I switch Tusk out and they actually nail the Tyranitar on the switching, which is why I'm kind of like letting them intentionally KO me right now. So, takes a little of bit of patience to get there, but once we have Assault Vest Tyranitar out, like, that's one of the best Pokemon you could have against Fluttermane in this format. It's kind of why Tyranitar is uh, really strong. It's good into Fluttermane, good into Iron Bundle. Has a lot of versatility. Okay, so Great Tusk finally faints. And they Spore again. Yep. Yeah, I'd say, like, Amoongus being to actually heal back with the Leftovers um, slowly has made this a little bit more meaningful, but it's still fine. Bring out Tyranitar now. I think the main thing with Tyranitar is I don't expect my opponent to honestly um, cover for Terra Blast, like flying Terra Blast here. So I wouldn't expect Amoongus to Terra. If you're my opponent, basically, like you can protect and spore into Tyranitar. You could Rage Powder and Dazzling Gleam. Or you could protect this and Dazzling Gleam. I'm honestly happy going Shadow Ball, Terra, Terra Blast. And with the Salt Vest here, like, Tyranitar just doesn't take that much damage from Fluttermane's attacks, and, like, we just do so much more with our physical attacks. So, the main question here, I would say, is one, does Amoongus Terra, and two, um, does it protect? If it's neither, then we should just win. But, there is a Terra from Amoongus. Okay, nicely done. What's it gonna be? Terra Water, okay. Given that, I actually expected to survive Shadow Ball plus Terra Blast, but did they Rage Powder? Okay, Fluttermane protects, yep. So we, we probably don't knock out with this combo, mainly because they have both screens up, but it should do a sizable amount of damage where another attack essentially will KO. Ooh, and we get a special defense drop. That's actually, that might be a big deal, because it means Dazzling Gleam now can just finish it off. Here's the Terra Blast. Should survive. Yeah, with the Sliver. Although, I guess Dazzling was going to finish it off anyway. Okay. I, I think this will kind of come down to Sleep Turns. Um, but I think because I have this Substitute up with the Fluttermane, I'm still in pretty good shape. I guess the question is whether or not I should um, Shadow Ball or Dazzling Gleam. Because they should Rage Powder, in my opinion. They could always protect Amoongus, though. This is a, a game where Leftovers Amoongus had so much value, by the way, because, like, if they didn't heal all of that extra damage off, we would have been in super good shape. If I were them, I would personally protect Amoongus, I think. And since they just protected, I'm honestly fine clicking Shadow Ball here, because, like, Tyranitar kind of wins the 1v1 against Fluttermane anyway. It's a question of whether or not we wake up fast enough, and by clicking Shadow Ball, we punish them if they don't Rage Powder. Okay, yep, they do Rage Powder, though. There's Dazzling Gleam. Yep, Tyranitar really does not take that much. So we'll get the knockout onto the Amoongus here. It's going to be a 2v1 against Fluttermane. Yeah, and the logic behind Shadow Balling there is, I think there is a world in which... Um, I guess there's really no ins like they could protect Amoongus. Yeah, I was worried about protect Amoongus because then they potentially can pollen puff and spore Tyranitar again if I wake up. So I don't know. I just don't mind like forcing them to rage powder there. Um, I think I need to just not eat a three turn sleep here. I could protect. They should just as and gleam. Yeah, I'll just go for Protect and the uh, Crunch here. I guess if they just straight up, like, Moon Blast or Shadow Ball Tyranitar here. Oh, what a play. 
The thing is, like, I still can take another one anyway. So, yeah, I don't I don't mind making the safe plan. We managed to just wake up in one turn. Cool. Yeah, you can't pick up a double knockout right now. But that was a really nice read, actually. Like, the debate is whether or not it's actually just worth attacking for me there. In my head, I was like, even if they Shadow Ball, it's still fine. Um, but yeah, with Reflect being up there, they've managed to stall things out. Anyway, this was actually really close in the end. Especially, they found the good Water Terror on the Amoongus. Um... Amoongus was just kind of annoying to deal with. Okay, so they protect. That's fine. Yeah, I think the main thing is, like, it took me a while to actually break through Amoongus, and I was a little bit nervous of switching in Tyranitar earlier, because Tyranitar felt like the main win con. But at any point when I had Great Tusk on the field, if I just switched in Tyranitar, I think I would have been in better shape, because then I would have had Great Tusk potentially to conserve for the end game as well, right? Okay. Yeah, we have enough in HP to survive for one more turn with Sand. Beautiful. Yeah, it's the last turn of sand here, so you have to essentially get a double KO. You just go for a Dazzling Gleam here and hope for a critical hit onto Tyranitar. Yeah, we survive with 20. Oof, what a battle there. I think, like, even though we woke up earlier, I needed two crunches anyway, so the reality is as long as Tyranitar just, like... I think as long as we didn't eat up a three-turn sleep, we were probably fine. Let's say I went crunch, they went protect, I went crunch again. Um, yeah, because if, if we get a, if we wake up on the second turn, um, or the, yeah, if we wake up on the second turn or the third turn, um, then I just get that crunch off, right? And we should be good. Does that make sense? Because I, I, I woke up immediately after one turn, um... If I woke up after two turns, they probably would have just protected there. If I woke up after three turns, which is this position. Yeah, actually, we, I think we were fine um, overall. The main thing was they actually just went for the um, the Moonblast onto Tyranitar, which was kind of a nice play. Because uh, I was worried if they just clicked Dazzling Gleam in that position, I lose Fluttermane. You would still probably need two Moonblasts onto Tyranitar, given how bulky we were. So it was probably actually correct to just Shadow Ball with Fluttermane in that endgame. But yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the leftovers on Amoongus allowed them to get multiple spores off in this game, and since Talonflame was eliminated early, I didn't have as many Amoongus answers, but I think we had a pretty solid early lead, and Substitute on Fluttermane was really nice here, and kind of like stalling out Reflect and Light Screen, and allowing me to eventually get the free switch in into the Tyranitar and having multiple Pokemon that could attack. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a really intense one to get started here. Okay, we've got Tyranitar, Lycanroc, Arm Rouge, Indidi, Brute Bonnet, and Fluttermane. Tyranitar Lycanroc is pretty interesting. Generally, Tusk feels pretty strong here, but it has to worry about Wide Guard from Armor Rouge. Um, Tusk and is one thing to... Or sorry, um, Armor Rouge and is one thing to cover for. I actually think just going for Tyranitar here plus the Tusk is pretty strong. I think Gothitelle's not that great here. Psychic Terrain from NED Fake Out doesn't work into the Flutter main. Uh, so I'm happy with this lead, and I think I'll just go with Flutter main and Bundle in the back. I think the main thing is bringing Talonflame could be worth it to allow Great Tusk to outspeed things further. And we don't have Hydro Pump on the uh, Bundle, actually. You know what? The lack of Hydro Pump actually makes me want to bring Talonflame instead. Because like, there's a world in which Tyranitar faints, I pivot in Talonflame, I click Tailwind with Talonflame, and then just start Earthquaking away. I guess the thing about Tailwind, though, is if Lycanroc is just max speed, it outspeeds Great Tusk anyway, even if I had set up the Tailwind, which is kind of annoying. But... We also have Taunt with Talonflame, which is some good utility. Okay, and they go with Indy and Armor Rouge. So, like, Tyranitar is super well positioned right now. Um... The first question is, do I want to predict Wide Guard? Could also just be Grass Terra Armor Rouge here, right? Like, follow me, NDD, Terra this uh, into Grass and Trick Room is decently safe right now.
Unless, mm, I don't think Headlong Rush would get the one-hit knockout on Tindy D here. Okay, I'm going to go Headlong Rush Rock Slide here. Indy switches. Interesting. Okay. Into Brute Bonnet? Sure. They have booster energy here. That's a really risky play unless they're not unless they're tearing Armor Rouge. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh a Rock Slide Flinch here, honestly, I think wins us the game on turn one. Assuming they're trick rooming. If they're not trick rooming, then we're in also a pretty good shape. Man, I really thought about Flying Terra and just Terra Blasting Armor Rouge, but I'm not sure that's a one-hit KO anyway. I guess Close Combat's the better play there, right? Because it does the same amount into Indie D, and it covers for the Brute Bonnet switch in. Good damage from Rock Slide, though. They do manage to set up Trick Room. Okay, this is where the game gets interesting now. I'm really curious how fast Brute Bonnet and Armourouge are relative to Tyranitar. Uh, I don't have a switch it into Spore right now. They should probably Spore Tyranitar. I'm down to Flying Terra, Terra Blast into you, and then Close Combat into you. Yeah, I'm curious. It's the, one of the main questions is, is like Brute Bonnet and Armourouge just min speed? Because sometimes on the uh, Indie D Armourouge teams, like they'll actually still have um, like not min speed. Specifically so that they don't only need to rely on Trick Room to thrive. Okay, nice. They actually go for Seed Bomb rather than Spore, which is huge. Nice. I just get Terra Blast off into Armourouge. Beautiful. That should just be a double KO, right? Amazing. Yeah, I think... Um, Going for Seed Bomb there instead of Spore punishes them so heavily because it doesn't cover for my Flying Terra. And that's where, like, defensive Terras are so good in this game, right? Like, a single defensive Terra can really turn the tides. Although, I'm not sure Seed Bomb would have gotten the knockout anyway. It would have been kind of close. But, yeah, it's like if you miss that knockout, it's also bad. I guess the other thing is, like, they probably just weren't expecting Tyranitar to Flying Terra, Terra Blast into Armor Rouge. And they probably thought they were in pretty good shape, but... Despite Trick Room going up, we're up 4-2 and my opponents committed their Terra, right? That being said, the team that we're using is still pretty fast-paced, but oh, it's Flutter Mane in the back for them, so I think Tyranitar kind of just wins this, honestly. Cool. Uh, Flutter Mane, three turns of Trick Room. Talon Flame's pretty useless for me, but my Flutter Mane honestly should outspeed theirs as well. I'm honestly down to just crunch into Indie D and then Headlong Rush into Flutter Mane. Whoa! What? It's super slow Flutter Main. That's fascinating. But Crunch just one shots NDD. So it's min speed Flutter Main with like what? Iron Ball? I've never seen that before. And yeah, you can see how bulky it is. It takes a headlong rush from the uh <laughs> the Great Tusk. Man, that's nuts. Okay, well, either way, you're not beating Tyranitar. Like, their team, to begin with, didn't really have super good Tyranitar answers, but that's one of the most fascinating sets I've seen in a minute. Uh, two turns of Trick Room, so yeah, we'll always just win if I just Terra Blast here and Protect, because then I can just bring out my Flutter Main, Protect, as and Gleam. But, yeah. <laughs> that was really interesting. Um, it would be a very different game if they clicked Spore onto Tyranitar rather than Seed Bomb. I think they just kind of got happy trying to look for a knockout immediately, which makes sense, but Spore would have put me in a much more awkward position. If Spore comes out there, and they click Expanding Force, Tyranitar actually takes a lot of damage as well, right? And they're probably going to click Expanding Force in that position, and Spore plus Expanding Force covers for me, like, going for a defensive Terra as well. So, I would have been able to at least then knock out the, um, Indie D, or sorry, the Brute Bonnet with Close Combat, but then the question is where the game kind of goes from there. I think because, um, Trick Room is not really that good of a matchup, and honestly, after I saw the lead, I was like, maybe I should have let Gothitelle plus Tyranitar instead. The thing about Gothitelle plus Tyranitar is I didn't feel great leading that into, like, a Flutter Main or, like, a tyranitar Lycanroc combo. Um, but I actually think in retrospect, that was just the better lead, um, because there's not that much to worry about. 
And in a best of three, what's interesting is now seeing how slow the Flutter main was. I would actually have even more conviction leading Got to Tell Tyranitar. Mainly because with that, I could go for like Taunt plus Rock Slide on turn one. Kind of just trap them in and slowly KO them rather than allowing them to get free switch ins into their like offensive Pokemon immediately. So even though this was pretty one sided, it was mainly off them clicking Seed Bomb rather than Spore. And if Spore goes out there, it's a very different game. So yeah. I also could have clicked uh, Close Combat into NDD rather than Headlong Rush on turn one. That was another play to consider. Okay, we've got Screamtail, Torkoal, Tusk, Amoongus, Iron Hands, and Fluttermane. Interesting. So, looking at this kind of makes me think Trick Room with Iron Hands, Screamtail, Amoongus, and Torkoal, but you also have a faster mode with, like, Fluttermane. I wouldn't be surprised if it were bulky Fluttermane. They don't have any ground resistances or immunities. So, Tusk with Earthquake in general is pretty powerful here. <sighs> Got the tell is interesting. I think being able to taunt is valuable here. Yeah, I'm actually down for Got the Tell plus Tusk as a lead. My own Fluttermane in the back, and then probably Tyranitar as the fourth. Talonflame is interesting because it would allow me to like just Tailwind, but do I really want to Tailwind into their team composition? Alright, let's try this out. General idea, fake out pressure with Gothitelle. Tusk just starts using Earthquakes. Um, I think the main thing that's a little awkward with what I'm bringing here is I don't have great ways to like self-Earthquake because I'm not bringing the Talonflame, but it's okay. Headlong Rush is obviously incredibly powerful as well. And the thing with Gothitelle here is not only does it give me the trap, but it gives me Psychic into their uh, Great Tusk. It gives me Taunt into Amoongus, Psychic into the Iron Hands, faster fake out relative to Iron Hands potentially, right? So... A lot of utility from it. Wow, Screamtail and Iron Hands. Okay. That works for me. No booster energy. I don't know. Uh, seeing this, I would think they try to fake out into Trick Room. I'm down to Headlong Rush into Iron Hands here. In Taunt. That's one play. I could also fake out. I guess I could always reverse their trick room is the thing. Hmm. Okay, I'm actually going to protect to conserve Sash and Taunt. And they go for a Terra. Yeah, that makes sense. Def I think you kind of have to defense the Terra here, because otherwise you might just lose your Iron Hands, but... Given the defensive Terra, this probably means fake out and a Gothita, I would think. So, I actually think protect and fake out on my side was better on turn one. Okay, so Tusk protects. I don't think I really needed to conserve Focus Ash that much. Oh, but they end up clicking fake out into Tusk anyway. Okay, my play was a little suboptimal here, in my opinion. Um, but let's see if they're trying to trick room. I guess the other question is your item, because it's not booster energy, so it could be Mental Herb instead. Nice. Okay. That worked out pretty well. Um, I think I'm actually down to switch out into the... Do I want to switch out into Fluttermane? Man, if we had Heal Pulse right now, it'd be so hard for my opponent to do anything. Tyranitar is also pretty interesting here. Because I can just fly in Terra Terra Blast with this. So I'm down to switch into T-Tar because I think the likely... Uh, I guess they might click Close Combat into that slot. Yeah. Fluttermane's a better switch in, I think. Psychic into Iron Hands. Yeah, it's awkward because I really want to bring in Tyranitar, but I think if they just end up clicking Close Combat, I say switch in Tyranitar and I get one shot, that's a terrible turn for me. And since the Flutter Mana here is a little bulkier, I'm okay making this play. <laughs> no way! They don't have a single offensive attack. Oh my gosh. So, they're just gonna start struggling. Ice Punch, nice play. No freeze, which is good. Wait, struggle is so hilarious. No way. Last turn to Taunt, you already committed your Terra, so Shadow Ball is a KO. 
Yeah, I think I'm okay trading aggressively here. I mean, I could also protect here. I just really don't want them to get Trick Room up, right? So why don't we just take the Guaranteed Knockout and then just Psychic into Iron Hands. Oh! So much for Guaranteed Knockout. Coast Resist. Fascinating. Because he Berry. Alright, well, they're going to struggle once again. She actually does decent damage into Flutter Main. There's Psychic into... Iron Hands, and they're just going to Wild Charge. Interesting, they actually Wild Charge got the tail, though. Okay. Yeah, I feel like, um... I, I was fine with Fluttermane going down there, because it would give me a free switch in into Tyranitar, which I really valued. Tonto's wear off now. Does Booster Energy Dazzling Gleam actually get the KO? I would think so. But the question is whether or not it really makes a difference, because it's like... One more attack KOs this thing anyway. It's probably better to just Shadow Ball and make sure I get the knockout. And then Psychic into Iron Hands again. Anyway, Ghost Resist Berry. Really quiet him. Makes sense because Fluttermane is obviously so common in the format. Um, and we're getting to the point where I think a great Tusk endgame is looking really powerful, right? Like, part of what was essential is just, like, chipping away at the Iron Hands. Um, but we've done decent damage with all of these Psychics. And get a special defense drop, which is quite lucky as well. They go for Ice Punch rather than Wild Charge here. I feel like they're offensive targeting. I, I guess they might have been reading into me switching into um, Tyranitar, which is fair. I think Tyranitar actually kind of wins the game for us at this point, given what they have. Uh, their Fluttermane actually probably outspeeds us, but it's fine. I'm okay just going for Shadow Ball here. Haunt is actually pretty interesting, because it means then the Flutter main slot has to basically stay in or switch out. Mm, I think protecting here is fine, though. And I'll just Psychic into Iron Hands. Oh, their Flutter main protects. Okay. Yeah, I think, like, my opponent's, like, been fishing for me switching out, basically. But because I had bulky Flutter main, I was... And I honestly wanted Flutter main to faint, right? Like, I'd actually rather have Tyranitar out in this position rather than Flutter main right now, given that the Flutter main's slower... A wild charge, but you KO yourself from this, right? Oh wow, it actually still hangs on. That's impressive. Okay, so now I'm curious if they have Dazzling Gleam. I'm just gonna click Shadow Ball and Psychic. Actually, I don't really think I need the Psychic. Maybe Taunt's better there. Icy Wind! Ooh, okay. That's cool. So it's fast Icy Wind, which makes sense. With Life Orb. Oh, neat, neat. Okay, well, here's Psychic for a little bit of chip onto Fluttermane, and they're going to go for another Ice Punch. Okay. So I finally get the free switch in into Tusk plus the Tyranitar, which is nice. Uh, I think the question is who I should Terra, and I think the correct answer is to Terra the Tyranitar, because... Uh, I guess this turn is interesting. Like, what do we think their last Pokemon's going to be, right? It could be Great Tusk, Amoongus, or Torkoal. I expect... If it's Torkoal, I think we just win the game regardless of what I Terra. But I think I need a cover for it being Great Tusk. And that means I need a Flying Terra with this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to just Earthquake here and Flying Terra this turn. The only thing is I take a little bit more damage from Icy Wind, but that's fine. Yeah, uh, Terra Blast covers for an Amoongus switch in. And we know Iron Hands is a Salt Vested, so I think that's the best, most optimal play. So, we should be in pretty good shape right now, regardless of what their last Pokemon was. Gothitelle being able to trap in Screamtail was such a big deal in this game, in my opinion. Especially given that we had Taunt and they didn't actually have a single offensive attack. If they have play rough, that's a little different. Okay, they just protect, that's fine. You bait out my Terra, but I'm okay with that. I'll KO Iron Hands. You have to bring out Torkoal, Amoongus, or your Great Tusk. Like, you would think it's Torkoal, right? Given that they let Screamtail and Iron Hands, it's like if you're trying to set up Trick Room, you would want something that could really take advantage of Trick Room, and so Torkoal makes the most sense to me. 
Uh, but given the... This is the synergy, by the way, between the Tusk and the Tyranitar, and this is actually one reason why, like, Focus Sash is an item that some players like on Tusk, because it means I can even take an attack from the Fluttermane and kind of win the 1v1 trade-off against it. But I think we have a pretty good matchup into whatever their last Pokemon is, so no matter who it is, I feel pretty good, but let's see. Okay, it is actually their Great Tusk. That's honestly probably the hardest Pokemon to fight against here. Uh, and it's probably Focus Ash as well, right? So, like, I think the easiest play here is just to protect here and then crunch into their Flutter main. Yeah, especially since they just committed the Protect. Nicely done to bring Tusk, actually, instead of Torkoal or Amoongus. I think, um, that in itself is a skill in VGC, right? Bringing the right Pokemon. And that's why I wanted to conserve my Terra for um, Tyranitar rather than doing more damage with Tusk. So, yeah, they go for Icy Wind, which is fine. That's kind of expected. Yeah, it does okay damage, but certainly not enough to, I think, put us in KO range. And they headlong rush into Great Tusk. Beautiful. Yeah, I think their best hope was to hope that I just didn't have Protect on Great Tusk. Um, I figured Tyranitar was pretty safe in this position. And this is why Flying Terror is so nice, right? Uh, it makes it actually pretty hard for opposing Great Tusks. Especially, like, the standard offensive set with Close Combat, Headlong Rush, Earthquake Protect. So now we can just Headlong Rush and Terra Blast here. Okay, they Protect. That's fine. At this point, I don't think, like, you can knock both of my Pokemon out quickly enough. Right? Especially with Focus Sash on my Tusk. Also, honestly, looking at Shiny Tusk versus Regular Tusk, I kind of just like the color of Regular Tusk more. No lie. Okay, Tyranitar takes a little bit more sand. Two turns of Sandstorm left. I'm just going to go for the same play. A Long Rush. Terra Blast. And then a Forfeiting. Yeah. Cool. This is where uh, I think Gothitelle had so much utility with this team. Because with this team, you can go like Talonflame, Great Tusk immediately. You can lead Gothitelle as well. And I think like one of the things I learned while practicing with the team is that like Gothitelle can put your opponent into really awkward positions immediately. Because this team does have a lot of anti-ghost, right? You have Tyranitar, you have Fluttermane. So I think players are less confident leading with their ghost type Pokemon. And as a result, Gothitelle can often just trap both of your opponent's Pokemon in and put them in kind of a tricky spot. I think that game was made a little bit easier since my opponent, like, had several targeting selections where it's like they could have done more damage, for example. Uh, turn one, they actually could have gone for, like, it would have been more optimal for me to actually click Fake Out into Screamtail. Um, I guess the thing is, that doesn't cover for Covert Cloak. But, like, they could also have Mentor Herb, so it's hard to cover for every single item, uh, you know, combination there. But, yeah, like, if turn one they had clicked Fake Out into Gothitelle, then they at least get Trick Room up. My play turn two would probably be switching the, um the Great Tusk out and then reversing Trick Room and then taunting uh, the subsequent turn. But yeah, that's one line of play I could take. And then the other thing was kind of in the mid game where Iron Hands just kept targeting like Ice Punching and Wild Charging. Um, but like the way that it was distributed made it kind of weird um, in the sense that like, I, if anything it may have benefited them because I was waiting for the free switch into Tyranitar the entire time. But yeah, that was a super interesting one. But uh, being able to taunt Screamtail and Screamtail not having any attacks is one of the most satisfying feelings I have to say. Alright, for this one, we've got Mousehold, Annihilate, Arcanine, Tusk, Fluttermane, and the Iron Bundle. This feels like a pretty good Talonflame Tusk game to me, in my opinion. I'm really curious how fast their Pokemon are and who has the booster energy. I like this duo. Hmm... I honestly really want to bring Tyranitar, especially with Flying Terra. Tyranitar is just so good. Encore is interesting on the bundle, but I think we have so much offensive pressure with um, Fluttermane. So the general idea here is we can set up Tailwind and just potentially even Ground Terra. If they go Mousehold plus Annihilate, I could consider just Brave Bird Earthquake turn one. That's one combo to go for. I could also just go for will o -Wisp potentially. Yeah, they are going to go Mousehold and Nightlight, interesting.
We have a lot of options. I do think setting up Tailwind is valuable here to outpace my opponent later on in the battle. I don't know. It's it's interesting because, like, if I'm my opponent, I'm thinking... I'm also curious if they have Population Bomb on this. So, one play, Brave Bird and Ground Terra Earthquake. Another play, Taunt Mouse Hold. Like, do they just go for Beat Up or do they go for Follow Me? I don't really care about follow me. My only fear is like not knowing mouse hold. Like it, I guess could be the population bomb set. I think the safest play here is honestly to just tailwind. And earthquake turn one. Um, and I didn't go for headlong rush onto the mouse hold because I was worried about uh, ghost Terra. Okay, they went for steel Terra, but now you're just weak to earthquake. That works for me. And I have focus sash here, so. The upside is I will survive a Rage Fist. Alright, pretty ideal turn one. So they didn't go for Follow Me, meaning that I could have maybe gone for Will-O-Wisp. But I really valued setting up Tailwind in this game early on. Because um, it's so good to help out against what they have in the back, right? Yeah, so they go for the beat-up combo. That's totally okay with me. Especially given that they were Steel Terra here. Steel Terror honestly worked against them, but they went for it probably to not take super effective damage from Brave Bird. It's Rage Fist. Talonflame, beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly why I wanted a Tailwind, because I didn't want to end up clicking, like, Brave Bird, Earthquake, not KO, Annihilate, but then not get Speed Control. And so it's like, right now, the Tailwind doesn't look relevant, but it's so relevant going into, like, this uh, latter half of the game. Ooh, I could bring this out and set up Substitute. I think that's pretty interesting. I think the other angle was to just go into Tyranitar and start spamming attacks. Maybe that was actually the better approach, but... Like, if you're my opponent right now, you probably want to stall out my Tailwind, right? So, like, I'm interested in the idea of clicking Substitute. And... Had Long Rush into Annihilate. I guess they don't have to protect here, but I don't know. I'm thinking they want to stall out Tailwind. The safer approach was actually probably just go Tyranitar, Flying Terra Tyranitar, and then just Earthquake Spam. Uh, earthquake Rock Slide. That may have been better. I just thought if I could get a substitute up for free while they tried to uh, like stall to turn a Tailwind, I'm in such a winning position. Yeah. Okay, Mouse Protects. That's already really good to see. Beautiful. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Sweet. Get my substitute up for free. Pretty sure Earthquake does just KO Annihilate. I could consider Ground Terra here, but I want to kind of conserve my Terra for the... Tyranitar, I think. Yeah, I'm happy to just protect here and Earthquake. I don't know. I, I think you can make an argument to actually just have brought out Tyranitar. Like, yeah, they stalled to turn a Tailwind. I don't, but I just really value having Booster Energy Flutter main like under a substitute as Tailwind expires. Beautiful. And also just follows me. Follow me's. Follow me's follows me. <laughs> Great Tusk will get Earthquake off. And yeah, in the end, this Steel Terror actually really worked against my opponent. But it can, it can only understand why they were going for it. Beautiful. And this is actually interesting. It's one of those scenarios where I think, like, by not KOing the Mouse Hold, it actually may work in my favor. Because Mouse Hold is not doing very much right now, right? We've seen Beat Up, we've seen Follow Me, we've seen Protect. Baby Doll Eyes is the last move I think we should respect. I guess I actually didn't do a great job playing around Baby Doll Eyes that turn, huh? Okay, so they bring Tusk out. Last turn of Tailwind. Pretty easy for me to just click Dazzling Gleam into Headlong Rush. They should just double protect, but this is why I valued setting up that substitute earlier. I still have Focus Ash intact on Great Tusk as well, so we're super well positioned. And there's Baby Doll Eyes, yeah. I wonder if they could have survived last turn if they went Baby Doll Eyes. We, we still did a ton of damage on turn 1, but I don't know. It actually may have been enough, so... I could have considered going for a Ground Terra there to really seal up the deal. We get a crit on Great Tusk, but they're sashed anyway, and we should finish it off with Headlong Rush. 
And this is an example of a game where, like, being intentional about not picking up a knockout can benefit you because it prevented two free switch-ins. Although, I think they could have also just double protected this turn. At least sell out my Tailwind. And the reality is I conserved my Tyranitar because I thought Tyranitar also beats most of their team in the end game. I think the main thing is the lead matchup just worked out really well and then their Terra actually worked against them. So the combination of that allowed me to snowball this basically out of control very quickly. Flutterman comes out. We can just Shadow Ball and Headlong Rush. Man, having a move like Headlong Rush, like, can't miss, it feels, like, broken to me. <laughs> Mainly because I'm so used to using powerful moves that can always miss, you know? It's so funny in contrast to, like, Iron Bundle with Hydro Pump, for example. But, uh, yeah, that's why Hydro Pump isn't even on the Iron Bundle on this team. Ultimately, though, I'm not sure my opponent had a really good answer into Talonflame and Great Tusk, and, like, Mousehold and Nightwave was honestly one of the best leads I could have seen here. And so, yeah, I think the one thing I could have done a little bit... There are two things I could have done better. I think the first is... Um, after turn one, debating whether or not to bring in Tyranitar over Fluttermane. One of the reasons though I brought in Fluttermane was because I didn't want to show my hand too early and like go with the flying Terra immediately, whereas I figured with Fluttermane, I have the optionality of going for Terra on Great Tusk and I still don't know what my opponent has in the back, right? Flying Terra, uh, Terra Tyranitar is mainly valuable into Great Tusk on their end, but let's say they didn't bring Great Tusk or Great Tusk just gets eliminated early, then it actually might be more valuable to Terra the Fluttermane or the Great Tusk on my end, for example. And I figured it was just so likely they were going to go for a double protect, right? Um, and so even if they didn't, like it's fine because i had substitute i guess the worst case would have been follow me with mouse hold and then they rage fist into the annihilate but since i knew i had the surprise of substitute here i figured i also could just like really catch my opponent off guard and put myself in a super good spot after there and so that was kind of the logic and fortunately for us it did end up working out okay we've got toros that's not toros torkoal for rigoraf mimikyu dragon eye iron hands and the Excalibur. i also realize i have not changed the song at all in this episode uh, or the previous one so i deeply apologize for making you listen to the same song <laughs> for like seven battles in a row or eight battles um uh, that's my bad i had it set and i just never changed it but it is a good song so let's see for Rigoraf here, the threat of Trick Room is scary. Uh, it is like a fairly Trick Room oriented team, and Trick Room is pretty good against what we have. So, Taunt Got the Tell is valuable. I wonder if I ever lead both Talonflame and Got the Tell. If I'm my opponent, I'm leading Iron Hands plus Ferrigraph. I don't know, Dual Taunt is actually really interesting to me. Because it's like your iron... I can just... Oh, no. I can't fake out iron hands, but... It just seems so weird leading Talonflame God to tell. It's so passive. I want Tusk. <sighs> Fluttermane's so powerful here, but I feel like I need to go Tyranitar. I don't know. I, I think, like... I'm just really worried about Hard Trick Room, and I haven't had that much experience using this team against, like, Furigraph specifically. And so I'm kind of, like improvising here. I think another approach was to just lead Tyranitar, but the problem with that is that they could just defensively Terra for Rigoraf. But if they're mental or for Rigoraf, I'm also kind of in trouble here. Oh, it's Rigoraf Mimikyu. Oh, boy. The problem is not knowing. I guess I could just taunt both Pokemon, but, like, I feel like Mental Herb on one of the two is likely. <sighs> this is a nightmare in a best of one. With a closed team sheet. Like, I could double taunt Mimikyu if I were expecting Mimikyu to Trick Room and Ferrigraf to Hyper Voice, for example. <sighs> I think they probably have Mental Orb here. I don't know, but like, both Pokemon apply offensive pressure. I'm just gonna double taunt. We'll see if they have Mental Orb. Okay, Mimikyu doesn't have it. Rigoraf. Nice. Okay, that works out. I will take that turn. All things considered, could be worse. Okay. So you don't get Trick Room up. Uh, I can Will O Wisp now into Mimikyu. And Psychic into it as well. They might just knock out both of my Pokemon here. It actually might be worthwhile to switch Tyranitar in right now. Yeah. 
Because Tyranitar resists Hyper Voice and a Ghost type attack. Mimikyu switches. Okay. Confirming it's faster than Gothitelle. No surprise there. Iron Hands! Ooh, I will gladly take that if I don't miss Will O Wisp. I don't know. Hard Trick Room is just not a fun matchup to go up against. And so I was like, I need everything I can do to deny Trick Room. And like with this lead, at least I have a little bit more confidence. Although if they had a Mentor Bun either, that would have been a nightmare. Okay, we don't miss Will O Wisp. Thank you. Uh, the game is going to become really interesting really quickly. Because the problem is by going with Talonflame and Gothitelle, both are pretty passive Pokemon. I don't like it actually do that much damage with either, but... Now I can go out into Gothitelle to trap both of these Pokemon in. I think the thing is, like, Furgraph probably should consider a Terra here. Oh wait, I can't fake out, sorry. Uh, because of Furgraph's ability. Actually, then it's better to go into Tusk, in my opinion. The former Titan is such a cool name, by the way. I honestly want to just send it, like... Oh, I was going to say Ground Terra. Ugh. Like, I expect a defensive Terra from one of these. It's probably better to Flying Terra Tyranitar. Iron Hands isn't really actually a problem for me right now. My problem is them setting up Trick Room later on in this battle, but like... Because I could Earthquake here, Flying Terra, and then Crunch. And they stay in with both, which I would say is a good sign. Oh, actually, I think it was better to protect here. Because Iron Hands just pivoted in, so they have Fake Out into Hyper Voice here, which is not good for me. Oh, but they didn't go for it. Okay. And they didn't Tarot with Ferrigraf, so we should just knock it out with Crunch, right? That's like as ideal of a turn as I can get here. Nice. I don't love my play that turn, though. I think it could have been improved. Nice Thunder Punch into Tyranitar. Well done. Uh-oh. That's not good. It should be okay for now. Um, That is a little scary, though. Yeah, I'm worried about like having enough damage to win this game. Because like Gothitelle in the back essentially doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, so Mimikyu comes back out. Um, I'm just going to Earthquake here. I could Rock Slide. I could also switch into Gothitelle. But then I'd be Earthquaking myself, which doesn't feel ideal. Okay, I'm going to Earthquake Rock Slide here. Question is what their last one is. Torkoal? What? Terra? Oh, are they grass tearing here? No. Steel? Interesting. Okay, well, you're weak to low kick as well as earthquake. So far, I don't think the pair is actually going to change anything in the current state. Um... If they are trying to Trick Room and we flinch with Rock Slide, I probably just win immediately. Because I think Earthquake kind of clears whatever is in the back. They are trying to Trick Room here. Okay. No flinch. Now the game gets interesting. It's especially interesting because with that Terra, I can now fake out into Mimikyu with Gothitelle. I expect Torkoal in the back, yeah. Hmm... I do get an attack boost. I think the best play here is to just protect and then give up Tyranitar to get the free switch in into Gothitelle. I could also switch into Gothitelle right now. I don't think that's that great though. I don't know if I survive an eruption with this HP, basically, is, is my main dilemma.
Yeah, I'm happy to protect Rockslide here. Mimikyu, kind of a nightmare to deny Trick Room from. And since they had two Trick Room users, this match was tough. It's going to be a really close finish because I have the Fake Out with Gothitelle here, right? So I can Fake Out either Pokemon, and then the question with Tusk is do I click Headlong Rush or Earthquake, and do they protect? Or is it Specs Torkoal? Yeah, Play Rough is fine. I think this is also where having Heal Pulse would have been pretty cool, but this moveset is so essential. Makes sense. You can't fit it on. Okay, so let's double check the field state. Three turns of Trick Room. I have Fake Out right now, and the question with Tusk is, do I want to Headlong Rush, say, into Torkoal? I could double up into that slot. I could also Fake Out Torkoal and Earthquake, but I would be doing a ton of damage to myself. Or I could Fake Out Mimikyu Headlong Rush. I don't know how much Earthquake does with the attack boost is the thing. Okay, I'm going to double up on a Torkoal here. Nicely done. Uh, I wasn't sure if they were going to be Specs or not. <sighs> I also thought about Fake Out Mimikyu and Earthquake there. That would have won me the game, but it's hard to make that play. Yeah, that wins them the game, I think. Unless I get a double Protect now. Oh, and an attack drop. <laughs> and they were life for Mimikyu, that's cool. Yeah, it like, close team sheet made this so hard, because I have to play so many guessing games, right? It's like, neither of their Pokemon actually had Mentor. So they ended up like, bringing Talonflame to double taunt, which ended up not really proving to be valuable. Uh, we go for the double protect win condition right now. Double protect into... Like, the thing is, because of the at attack drop, I probably need an Earthquake crit as well. But, yeah. If I went fake out into Mimikyu and Earthquake, that would have been game winning, but it's kind of hard to do that, right? Because if they just click Eruption with Torkoal, it's a nightmare, and... Choice Specs is like a decently common item on hard Trick Room teams. Um, this is probably Charcoal. Okay, wait, actually, given that I survived that... The Double Protect might just straight up win me the game. Psychic does a lot there, too. Yeah. Okay, we need to go for the double. They have Shadow Sneak, I wonder if that just KOs. Yeah, because we have one more turn of Sunlight, so if I actually get the double Protect off, then Protosynthesis is still around, I can just Earthquake. Alright, Great Tusk, are you clutch? No. <laughs> GG. Uh, they had Shadow Sneak anyway, would that have KO'd? Yeah, we would survive. So if I get the double there, um, then the next turn I just Earthquake, right? I don't... If Mimikyu didn't have Protect, right? Like, they could Protect Torkoal, Shadow Sneak, but then Earthquake, and I just Headlong Rush into Torkoal. It's just a little sad, because I had the possibility to win, given the turn Torkoal protected, but I didn't mind playing aggressively there. I guess the scary thing is, I was thinking, even if I KO Torkoal there, with Play Rough onto Iron... Ha or, sorry, Great Tusk, can I win the game? Because, like, I have Psychic on the Gothitelle, but that's not actually that strong into Mimikyu, so maybe I did need to just click Fake Out into Mimikyu in that position, and go all in with, like, an Earthquake. I just didn't think Protosynthesis boosted Earthquake without Terra would have actually KO Torkoal was the thing, because Torkoal is really defensive. Um, I also could have gone Fake Out Mimikyu Headlong Rush into Torkoal, but I think I needed to just go all in on that turn and just commit to one or the other. So, yeah. Either way, though, Hard Trick Room is a tough matchup, even though the Double Taunt worked out. Um, in the end, they were actually able to get Trick Room up, and if Trick Room goes up, it's a nightmare for this team to deal with, right? And so kind of glad to feature uh one of the tougher matchups uh and i think what made this tougher is that they had two trick room users and mimikyu having disguise makes it even harder for me to break through and then torkoal uh in terms of offense just pretty good especially since i committed my flying terra to tyranitar a little bit earlier i think that was one other thing i could have considered like not actually blowing the terra like the way i did and having conserved it but i like the idea of like earthquaking since they didn't terra ferrigraph though i actually totally could have just gone crunch into ferrigraph and then like headlong rush into iron hands but I'm curious if Crunch would have actually KO'd for a graph. But I think, like, that's where I kind of point to in the battle. Because I think it was very likely they were going to have Torkoal in the back. And then by giving up my Terra on Tyranitar, it made things substantially more challenging for me. Also, their, uh, the Wild Charge, or sorry, Thunder Punch play into Tyranitar was really nice. Because it dealt so much more damage than if they had clicked a Fighting type attack. And if I had more HP, then I likely, with the Assault Vest, would have survived an attack from Torkoal and been able to, like, protect Rock Slide, for example, um, and that would have changed the game drastically as well. So that one specifically, uh, specific read by my opponent, I think, was an excellent play.
Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Hopefully this has opened your eyes to the power of this kind of hyper offense in this format. So see you all soon. All right. Peace.